All right. Uh, we'll just, in the interest of time, I'll just open it up to the audience. If you have any questions uh, for the panelist, uh, please go ahead and uh, identify yourself and then uh, introduce yourself rather and then ask the question, please. Yeah, this is morning starting problem. Uh, the brains have to just kick in. So I'll do the first question. You know, we saw excellent uh, solution from Pratip. Where is he? He just left. Okay. Maybe he's there anyway. Uh, on the satellite space, we saw Krishi Kalpa doing excellent work uh, in the agri space uh, and especially with the not for profit objective. Backend protocol is also not for pro uh, profit as a protocol of resource discovery. So I could see some alignment there. Uh, JLL, of course, uh, profit is uh, one of the three things uh, which is key. Uh, if I were to explore each of you one by one, just in one minute, not longer, one minute, uh, with whom and with in which way you would like to work together. So, who wants to start? And Next question, spot. guys, get ready. Yeah, if somebody that's wants. a tough spot you put me in, Joe's. Uh, but if I have to answer that straight, right? I mean, on this table, right? I, I can already see a synergy with Beckon Protocol, uh, right from that go word of sustainability. Because globally today, uh, sustainability is where to E, S, and G. The governance is where people are having great concerns of how do I report uh, what I'm actually doing? How do I keep myself uh, transparent? At the same time, I safeguard my business interests as well. I think that's the biggest challenge. Uh, in fact, we did run an experiment with blockchain to do the, achieve the same. But then we realized who owns the blockchain itself becomes a bigger problem uh, than breaking down the whole transparency to no meaning. I think that's where I see a great synergy with Beckon, like protocol because it's using the existing Web2 infrastructure, which is the internet itself, and then building protocols so that everybody can be owning their own data, keeping themselves safe, and then still be interacting with each other. I think that's somewhere I see an immediate synergy with uh, Beckon from the larger real estate and sustainability goal itself. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I mean, you made my answer much easier. Now. Actually, um, to be very honest, uh, Backend protocol is so abstract. Uh, so it's pretty much relevant to every sector that we talked about today. And uh, it itself, just like the internet itself does not solve for anything, but it provides an infrastructure that allows for solutions to be built. Similarly, backend protocol creates a unified language between a producer and a consumer. And it could be a producer of anything and a consumer of anything. It could be data, it could be agriculture, it could be pro produce, it could be solutions. Uh, however, uh, I think uh, I would probably limit my answer to maybe probably in, uh, from a sustainability point of view. It allows, if, uh, it allows for all of these systems, innovation labs to create these frameworks, it allows for you know, uh, farming solutions, it allows for all of these uh, you know, satellite data to be available on that common infrastructure so that anyone, any startup ecosystem probably funded by innovation labs can actually build solutions on top of that. So yes, uh, I believe that there is a common underlying, you know, connection that I feel with all uh, that I spoke to you, including, including the Satcho folks. Uh, happy to connect later, guys. I think, uh, as I said, uh, we are more a not-for-profit initiative. Any startup who's working in the agri-tech space wants to connect with the grassroots level people or with the government agencies, uh, or for that matter, since it's a, a, a global uh, people are already available here. If some of you want to understand the grassroots innovations, what's happening out there, majority of the time, the technology labs happens at the R&D part. Implement is the bigger challenge, and I agree uh, in our country it's more than 50% people are dependent directly or indirectly. Here is where we can actually leverage some of these networks and then see instead of we creating a recreating a wheel, we can directly see how we can go for the implementation part. Like, uh, I mean, Satsure is a very clear uh, partner whom we can work with because a lot of these FPOs, as I said, each of these FPO on an average goes with 500 to 1000 test members. There. And at the same time, these district uh, people whom we are working, they are connected to more than 10, 15,000 farmers directly or progressive farmers over there. Some of these people are in very much in touch with us. And since they believe that we have done something uh, impactful in their journeys, whosoever requires those sort of networks connects, happy to talk to them. Uh, on an average, weekly basis, we connect two or three startups to the farming sectors whom we have groomed. Our, our entire ripple effect is that some of these people who have been working with them, they can make a direct connection, and, and, and none of the transactions have been routed through Krishikalpa. So it's only what we provide as a pure player track kind of thing, where 
uh, if a startup is a train, we are only laying a track so that they can go to the, reach to the destination part. So anybody for that matter is willing to partner, I'm happy to uh, have a conversation with them in particular. I have a quick question for Dr. Anna. I don't want to let you off the hook so easily because <laughs> those three got to uh, speak. Um, the solution that you articulated, uh, maybe if you can throw some more light on how that would be relevant from an Indian context, uh, what are you seeing here, how it could help uh, India in the long run? I mean, uh, especially in India, we are facing a lot of problems uh, with losses during storage. So typically, like people are not aware or they say we don't have a problem, but then I go to the silo, I take out a grain sample and I have actually more insects than grain in my hand. So that is the kind of uh, problems we are facing. Um, but equally, as I said, uh, unfortunately, one of the biggest poultry farmers in India um, a couple of years back killed all the chicks with contaminated feed. Uh, he got mycotoxins in the uh, storage, during storage. So we had uh, presented a solution to him beforehand and he said like, no, we don't have any problems. And then the year after he came back and said like, okay, now, uh, we would like to buy some machines. Um, so now, in the meantime, they have 50 machines all over their plants, so they don't face any problems anymore. But my uh, aim is always to throw some light on this problem and educate people so they can take an educated decision and we can um, avoid such situations as well. You know. Just to add one point for Anna, right? There are a lot of, uh, in even in government of state government, Karnataka, Nabad, or there's a company called Ergos, which is actually into storage part of it. Some of them would actually be facing the problem, what you rightly mentioned. And if there is any connections you require us to make it, happy to talk to them, and then see if your solution can be a right fit for them as well. There is a company called Ergos, which has got uh, its solution deployed more than 10,000 plus warehouses they have been looking for some of them. They might also be having some solutions, I'm not, I'm not aware of it, but that, that's something which I see a direct connect with your technology with their companies as well. Yes, that would of course be great. Uh, whoever uh, <laughs> has some contacts and get me in touch, um, very welcome. Uh, we have of course a lot of installations all over India already, so uh, yeah, happy to discuss this. It's nice to see collaboration happening right on this stage. Um, Questions? Hi, good morning. Uh, my question is to Dr. Anna. Identify yourself. Uh, this is Harsh uh, I come from a company called DSV. I'm into logistics and supply chain management. Uh, but I really thank Dr. Anna to take up this subject and to hear about one third loss of global food is very unfortunate. And uh, really thankful to bring up this awareness. And I, what I really want to understand is, uh, is there any limitation that in terms of space or area where we can start this in India uh, or and also what would the approximate cost be around for starting up this because in India the farmers are not very rich so uh, to begin with if they really wish to start here in this process what would be the approximate cost come up to and what would the area be to begin with? Yeah, that is of course like um, we have machines for all kind of um, storage sizes um, but uh, to cite one of my uh, silo colleagues, uh, a Spanish uh, silo supplier, so he is saying basically if you go for a new storage plant, the investment cost for a chiller will be roughly 2 to 4 percent of the overall cost of the plant. And it's basically an insurance. <laughs> and so he was, he was actually saying like he doesn't understand how people can build a storage without a chiller because it's only 2 percent of the investment, but you're risking much more because the value of the product that is stored in the plant always exceeds the investment cost by far. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Teja Murthy. I have always been interested in agriculture. And uh, there have been times when I've seen the tomatoes being dumped on the roads because of the price fall. Uh, another issue that I've seen is the way the storage happens. They remove the stem of the vegetable. And that reduces life of the produce. So now what happens is, is there overproduction resulting in, you know, like uh, not feeling the pinch of the loss? Uh, that is a sort of a message that has to go to the grassroot, like uh, uh, the stem of the fruit or the vegetable increases the shelf life by almost uh, maybe a week or even a month. That's what is being lost. I think uh, that part, sustainability also involves uh, this kind of education. Thank you. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Hava. 
I am an entrepreneur in Portfolio Management Services in Indian share market. I have also been selected in uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Mission Karma Yogi to train Dhaak Karma Yogis. And uh, thank you so much. And I also been selected uh, as Relationship Manager for an incubator, MSME incubator, which helps uh, former related allied services, uh, adding added services it has. I have been as Relationship Manager for six states actually, uh, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Kerala, Odisha, etc. So I want to know how your collaboration with the MSMEs, with the um, incubators are working for the beneficial of the F FPOs. This question is directed to Mr. Patel. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, the way we are working, when we started working, we carefully choose a company which are upwards funded because I wanted some of these companies to pay upfront for the farmers. Now, uh, in the last one year, we have started working with a lot of this incubator network in the country uh, where whosoever needs the market linkage or the market penetration part, right, we are asking them to reach to us. So we have partnered with KDM and all of those uh, industry bodies. And I'm personally connected with a lot of incubator network. So most of these people come to us. In fact, even Social Alpha Challenge, all of those things are now connected to us. If you know somebody, please connect us. We'll, we'll be able to happy to solve the work with them. Thank you. 